Hey everybody and welcome to another video. In this one we are going to be looking at very very basic principles of adding a location system into your game. Before we get started I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who subscribed. We're currently over 220 subscribers which is absolutely awesome. If you haven't yet subscribed jump on there and do it. Give us a thumbs up, hit the notification icon as well, and then you'll stay up to date with my latest content for RenPy, Dash Studio, and anything else that I may update in the future. So let's jump right into this. So here we are in our Tutorials with Thundy file. Now, if you haven't been following along with my previous tutorials and you haven't got this file, don't worry, you don't need it. It's just a good place for me to jump in. So we got all of our it's niff naff and trivia here from previous tutorials such as the game guide screen which we're going to get rid of we're going to get rid of these two bad boys as well uh, game running is true this is our game loop so we are going to we're going to leave these things in here just for the fun of it and what i'm going to do at first is i'm going to add a new variable and i'm going to call it location so default capital L location equals and then I'm going to say our default location is home and that's a good place to start now before we jump any further what I want to do is explain a principle to you so in a 3d game you have to have X Y and Z coordinates and your location in the world is dictated by those coordinates and those coordinates correlate to the game map so you're not in a location unless your coordinates match those of the location or the bounding box, bounding sphere of that location. And in order to move to those locations, you have to physically change the coordinates. In RenPy, when we're creating a visual novel style game, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about coordinates at all. All we need to do is change a variable. So what we've got is a location variable and it's set to home. Now you could, if you were creating a game with millions of locations, you could set that to a number which corresponds to a value, but the chances are in your Rempi game, you're not gonna have millions of locations. You're gonna have, you know, maybe tens, you know, definitely not hundreds, I would have thought, unless you're creating a masterpiece of uh, of engineering but essentially all we need is a string so we've got a string and it says home now what we're going to do uh, here is we're actually going to change the text that's displayed when the menu is presented to to the player and we're going to simply put in a location so we're going to open it in brackets and we're going to type in location like so and now what will happen is when the menu appears it'll tell you where you are in fact i'm going to say i am at and there we go so now what will happen is when we run it it'll tell us what this variable is so that's all very well and good but what if we want to change our location so we can and this is the basic 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 thing in the intermediate video we'll cover using an actual map to change the location but for the purposes of this video, we're going to put change location to, and we'll put this one to the shop. And then we'll just put dollar string location equals shop. And we'll copy and paste that a couple of times. And we shall put this one to auntie's house with the correct punctuation like so and then we'll change this one to school because everybody here we're all at school boom now so in theory if we were to run this which we will so let's have a look see what pops up Don't worry about all of this. If you haven't ever, if you haven't been working along with me in these uh, videos, this will all look like weird stuff going on. This is just from previous videos. So if you want to learn how to use a video background or move stuff around on the screen, by all means, do that. So we have got 
I am at home. We've got a menu up here because this is something else we did in a previous video. And we've got the quick menu here. So I want to change my location to the shop. Boom, we are now at the shop. Change location to auntie's house, auntie's house. Change location to school, change location to school. Do you know what I didn't do though? I didn't put a return home button on the menu. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna quit out of this. Yes, I'd like to quit. So we'll copy and paste this one more time. And I'm going to put return home as our menu option. And then we'll just set that back to home. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, okay, that's pretty noddy. You know, that doesn't feel like it's a location system. So here's the thing. Once this variable is set, we can make a number of decisions based on that. For example, we can change the background image to represent the location. So we could have an image for home, an image for the shop, an image for auntie's house, an image for school. And then when you move to that location, the image displayed in the background changes. And you can do that in a number of ways. You can have a number of images defined and you can set up a number of if statements. For example, you can say if location equals equals home. So let's just, I'm going to show you the code just in case. So we want to do this outside of the menu because otherwise Rempi will throw a hissy fit. So you would say, for example, if location equals equals home, and then it would be show. And let's just say we've got an image defined that is called home. And then you would, and it would show the home image. If we change that to lowercase, then you would only need to have a file called home.jpg in your game file and then it would show it. And then you could say elif uh, location equals equals school show school. Now, what you can see is going to start happening is the more locations we add, this line of code is going to start getting kind of wacky. So what we can do is we can just get rid of this altogether. If we say if location equals equals, in fact, what we'll do is we're going to add a bit. This is a, a more of an intermediate kind of thing, but I want to throw it in there because um, this can make your code a lot easier. So we'll say renpy dot has underscore image. And then we will say location is the name. And then we have to say uh, exact equals true. So it has to be matching the name, uh, the location name exactly. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say location dot lower like so. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the value of the location string. So it'll, in this case, it'll take home. It will make it all lowercase, like so. And now it's going to look to see if there is an image called home. And if it's true, and it has to be exact, it has to match the lowercase version of this variable completely. So it has to be cap lowercase home. If it's exact, then we will say show expression. Now it helps if you spell expression correctly. And then we'll just simply say location. Now, in theory, if we had a file in our game folder called home.jpg or home.png, it would show that now. So let's just save that and we're going to run it because hey, I, even I make mistakes. It may throw a hissy fit. No, it's not. So we are good. So I'm at home. I'm at school. I'm at auntie's house. I'm at shop. I'm at home. So that's so far so good. Now, I'm going to get a, a couple of images to throw in to represent these locations and put them into the game folder. And let's see what happens. OK, so now we've done that, we should be able to see. So I'm going to make a couple of changes here because I think this code is going to confuse some people. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to 
uh, location underscore img so location image the image name for location and we're going to say equals location dot lower like that and then we can get rid of that out of this and say that and then all we have to do is get rid of the expression statement there and img so now just to remind everybody what we're doing we're creating another variable which is a lowercase version of our location variable then we're checking to see if there's an image in our image memory that is of the name as in the, that is named the lowercase version of our location and if there is we're going to display it now the reason we do a check is because we don't want any wacky anomalies coming up on the screen like um, that weird girl outline or anything like that you know the silhouette that comes up if an image doesn't exist or whatever and I think we'll keep expression back in there um, we'll quickly test it and see what happens so we hit start okay so we've got an image there so now the game the player will think we're at this location so if we now go to the shop here we are we're moved to a technology shop going to go to auntie's house to see auntie there you go she's got a nice house with a little wicker chair on the porch and um, now let's go to school oh crikey we've ended up in an ancient greek school school of athens or something like that and if we return home there we go and that's all there is to it for the really really basic really really basic um, location system in the intermediate video we'll obviously cover how to actually add a map that you can click on buttons to send you to those locations instead of using the games menu but i hope you found that useful give us a thumbs up and a subscribe as i said at the start of the video let me know what you think in the comments below and if you have anything you'd like me to talk about just let me know in the comments see you soon Bye bye